Low cells are available in a variety of shapes, including S bean, canister, shear bean, bending bean, and double bending bean. They come in a variety of materials with multiple mounting kit options. With so many choices, we understand that selecting the correct low transducer for your application is a challenging task, as there is no real industry standard on how you go about choosing all. But now we are here to help. This video is gonna walk you through the six main considerations to help you find the suitable low cell for your application. Since different low cell applications have unique requirements, it's important to understand your application and what you're weighing. What are you measuring, and how is the low cell loaded? Is it tension, compression, or both? Tension low cells are used to suspend the item being measured. And measure how the low cell flexes as it is put. Compression low cells do just the opposite. Force is applied directly to them, and the force is measured based on the way the low cell flexes when weight is applied. Once we know the application, we need to know the kind of environment where the weighing system is to be located. Consider whether the low cells will be operating in hot or cold temperatures. Consider what other substances will come in contact with the low cells. Are they in a washed-down environment? Will they encounter corrosive liquids, gases, or solids? If so, you must consider the IP or ingress protection rating of your low cells, and also check if your system is going into a hazardous environment. Discuss the application with your low cell dealer to determine what approvals you might need for the location. Speaking of protection level, identifying types of material and sealing the selected low cell is developed with is also a critical factor we have to keep in consideration in the selection process. There are three kinds of materials that are commonly found on the market, namely two steel or alloy steel, aluminum, and stainless steel. Two steel is by far the most popular option for low cells. Compared to other materials used in low cell construction, the cost to performance ratio of two steel elements is better. Two steel low cells are relatively inexpensive, have a large capacity range, and are best used in dry applications. Aluminum is usually used in single point low capacity applications. As the least expensive of the three materials used to manufacture low cells. Aluminum low cells are designed within low capacity ranges and are not supposed to be exposed to wet or chemical conditions. Finally, there comes a stainless steel option. Hermetically sealed, stainless steel has a higher resistance to moisture and chemical corrosion than two steel or aluminum, making low cells of this type an ideal choice in damp or corrosive applications. Another important item to consider is the seal type to protect the low cell's internal components. The options are environmentally sealed, welded seal, or hermetically sealed. Environmentally sealed. This type of sealing will protect the low cell from damage caused by dust and debris, and moderate humidity caused by splashing of water. In no way will the low cell be protected from immersion under water or being exposed to pressure cleaning. Hermetically sealed technique involves a welded cover or sleeve that encapsulates the gauge pocket. This technique is generally used with stainless steel low cells, as a stainless hermetically sealed low cell should only be used in heavy washdown or chemical applications. A welded sealed low cell is basically identical to a hermetically sealed cell, except where the low cell cable comes out. Welded sealed low cells are for use where the cell may get wet on occasion, but are not intended for heavy washdown applications. Determine your capacity and resolution requirements. What are the expected loads? What is the minimum resolution and maximum capacity you need? Be sure to select the capacity over the maximum operating load, so that the low cell does not risk being overloaded. And that it is not weighing at so close to full capacity that repeatability and accuracy suffer, and as well determine all extraneous loads and moments prior to selecting the capacity. That being said, it's not recommended to select a capacity that is so much high that you cannot achieve the desired resolution.
Next, you need to define your size requirements like width, weight, height, length, etc., and specification requirements such as accuracy, nonlinearity, hysteresis, creep, bridge resistance, resolution, frequency response, overloading conditions, fatigue loading, etc. Another item to consider in choosing the suitable low cell is the electrical signal. Low cells work by converting force into proportional electrical signals. Therefore, it's important to understand the electrical output type necessary for your application, which could include millivolt, voltage, current, or digital output. You can find the excitation voltage data on our website for each of our low cells. If your PLC or DAQ requires analog output, digital low cells output, or serial communication, you will need a low cell amplifier module. That is all for the video. Though there are many other considerations that may influence the low cell choice for your application, being aware of these key considerations sketched out in this video will prepare you for the initial discussion with one of our technical support representatives. If you're ready to start the process of finding the right equipment for your operation, click below to contact our team of experts today.